Man, I'm so glad we have all these apostles who can teach us. Oh wait, no, they're dying out. Quick, preserve their teachings. It's illegal unless you are Armenian. Hey! There's also the restorationist movement where people try to rebuild Christianity from scratch. You can huh. make a bunch of denominations out of this. And who falls inside of this? The Church of Christ, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Mormons, and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Bruce Lawn. This is another new channel you guys need to be up on. I love showing you guys early channels, like folks that are just now uh, taking off. Like, and this dude is, I mean, he's new. He has 4,000 subscribers, okay? And that's, that's a massive W. And this video came out two weeks ago. The channel is called Redeemed Zoomer. Christianity. It's the world's largest religion. It's almost 2,000 years old, and it's very diverse. Sometimes it looks like this, and sometimes it looks like this. That's a Smiley Joel right there, man. That's Smiley Joel. Higher Vision Church. They got the rock concert with the ill LED wall. I would love to have a bigger LED wall. That joint is so cold, man. <sighs> How did this happen? So right after Jesus ascended into heaven, he left the 12 apostles in charge until he comes back. When's he going to come back? Well, he said it wasn't for them to know, but still everyone thought Jesus was about to come back. That's right. So at Pentecost, the 12 apostles all received the... By the way, Jesus is still coming back. And yes, I think it's fair to say that the apostles thought that Jesus was going to come back in their lifetime. Much like a lot of things they thought was going to happen didn't happen the way they thought it was going to happen, right? Remember, they thought he was going to establish a political kingdom. The, the Jews, till this day, still believe the Messiah is going to be a military leader. And so I feel like Jesus keeps like hitting everybody with the okie doke. Like, y'all want to, y'all want the lion, you know, military leader? Nah, I'm going to be the, the lamb. I'm going to be the sacrificial lamb. You guys want me to come back in your lifetime? Psych. I'm going to come back when I feel like it, right? <laughs> It's like so, it's so dope. Like he just consist consistently keeps defying the expectations of people. So at Pentecost, the 12 apostles all receive the Holy Spirit who empowers them to preach the gospel in many different languages. So they're living together as one big happy family and preaching to the people. And their numbers begin to increase dramatically. They're worshiping in the temple. And the Jewish leaders of the temple don't really like these new followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they begin to persecute them. Yep. And they even kill some of them, starting with Steve. One of the people who persecutes the Christians is Saul of Tarsus. He's all like, Christianity is cringe. Change my mind. <laughs> yeah. You guys all know who, who, that who that political commentator is. He changed his mind. And his name. <laughs> and now it's his job to preach Christianity everywhere, not just to the Jews. He goes to a bunch of cities and begins preaching to the Gentiles, which are people who are not Jewish people. Yep. Which raises the question, is Christianity Jewish? Mm -hmm. Yes, said Peter. No, said Paul. Who's mm -hmm. right? Paul is right. You don't need to become Jewish to become Christian. Cool. Now we've got Christianity all figured out. And just in time, because everyone still thinks Jesus is about to come back. Man, I'm so glad we have all these apostles who can teach us. Oh, wait, no, they're dying out. Quick, preserve their teachings. So people begin preserving their teachings and writings and compiling them into what would eventually become the New Testament. And, it's and I think this is actually a good reason for why some of the Gospels uh, are written later, not earlier, because... They thought Jesus was going to come back, right? So um, a lot of this stuff was probably written at the, towards the end of their life. Like, yeah, like we probably should write this down. Or we come back in our lifetime. He says he's coming back. We don't know when he's coming back, right? And so they, I mean, a lot of this stuff was written way later in 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 the century, right? And so I think that that, that that's a, that's a, that's an important point to make because that's a lot of the criticism. It's like, well, the gospels were written decades later. Well, yeah, because they probably thought Jesus was going to come back. Right? Good that we have the New Testament, because in the second century, a bunch of weird heretics and schismatic groups begin to pop up. You've got the Gnostics, who hate the world, the Marcionites, mm -hmm. who hate most of the Bible, the Montanists, mm -hmm. who get a bit too crazy sometimes, and mm -hmm. the Docetists, who think Jesus was too cool to be human. And the Apostolic Fathers, like these guys, the successors of the Apostles. Okay, so these, these are important names, right? Clement of Rome, Ignatius of Antioch, Polycarp. These are the, the, these are the guys who the churches were kind of passed down to, if that makes sense, okay? And there's and they have writings and there's stuff you can look up about them and their bios and all that kind of stuff. Are able to use the New Testament as a shield against these heresies. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to officially deal with these heretics because remember, Christianity is still illegal unless you live right. in Armenia, but in Rome, it's illegal. Shout out to my people! It's illegal unless you are Armenian, hey! Anyway. Yep, Christianity was illegal unless you lived in Armenia, which is, you know, we're the first Christian nation, by the way. And we still have a quarter of Jerusalem. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys knew that. I might, man, I'm, I could see myself having a place in Jerusalem 
in the Armenian quarter a couple months a year. How fly would that be? Anyway, let me stop dreaming. But yeah, uh, so Armenia was the first Christian nation, and it was not illegal there. Um, and it was, you know, Bartholomew and, and, and Jude went to Armenia, and they established a church there. At the time, there's also all this contentious and uh, Gnostic this and all these other issues happening, and so they they needed to kind of formalize it. And by the way, at this time, the letters of the apostles and Peter and 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 and, and uh, uh, Paul and Mark they're getting they're getting transcribed by hand, right? And they even have a manuscript of the Gospel of John going back to very 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 early. It's about the size of a credit card, right? And so that's how the, the, these Bibles are being uh, translated. It's like you make you got the original and then there's copies of the original and there's copies 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 of the original and then there's you know that that early manuscript of, of john is pretty pretty impressive but it's hard to keep it illegal because people keep converting don't worry the emperor will solve this oh wait no he just converted as well now he wants everyone to be christian so he gathers <laughs> all the christian leaders at nicaea to clarify what christianity is well mm -hmm. he worships jesus because he's god says almost everyone actually said some guy named arius jesus is like god but he's still created by god there was a time when jesus didn't exist and by the way, this was settled at the Council of Nicaea, and the only people that hold this view today are, hate to break it to you, the oneness Pentecostals. This was settled thousands of years ago, right? And uh, and 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 this this is settled way back then. Jesus was not created. Jesus is co-eternal. Okay. Bro, that's heresy, said Santa Claus, punching him in the face. So the Council of Nicaea... <laughs> is it that story is disputed? Nicaea clarified that Jesus is truly God. Arius right. got kicked out, and they wrote a statement summarizing the basics of Christianity. And the Arians kept trying to creep back into the church, but luckily St. Yep. Athanasius was able to defend the true faith, even Gangster. though he was against the world at times. Cool. Now we've got Christianity all... Oh, yeah, and Mormons and JWs. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Excellence. Yep, Mormons, JWs all believe that Jesus is not God eternal. They believe more. I think Jehovah's Witnesses believe he is a God, and Mormons believe he is, uh, he's, he's a created being as well. Figured out. Just kidding. We need a second council to clarify what the first council meant. The Holy Spirit is also God, just in case you're wondering, and Jesus is also fully human, because this one guy thought Jesus had a human body, but not a human mind. Okay, so he got kicked out, and now we've got Christianity all figured out. We know that Jesus is both truly human and truly divine. Some guy That's named right. Nestorius said, yeah, but humanity and divinity are like really different things, so we got to separate them. The human part of Jesus isn't God, and Mary gave birth to human Jesus, but not divine Jesus. Bro, that's heresy, said Cyril of Alexandria. The whole point of Christianity is God coming down, becoming human, and dying for us. That's right. So they had another council, and Cyril wins, and Nestorius gets kicked out. They decide that Mary is the mother of God, but some people still side with Nestorius. Assyrian Church uh, of the East, okay? And so this goes really far back, 431. And, uh, and they have the distinction of that one specific thing. So notice that, that when you start seeing these divisions as they go on, they become they, 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 they become the first, I would say the first three schisms are over very like minor details, if that makes sense. You can make a denomination out of this. It says you can make a denomination out of this. That's, that's, a, that's a punchline, right? You can make a denomination out of this. So it's this Syrian church. Okay, so we know that we can't separate Jesus's humanity and divinity. Now we've got Christianity all figured out. Some people really want to avoid the Nestorian error, and they don't want to separate Jesus' humanity and divinity, so they say they're united in one nature. Hold up, Jesus is one person, but he has two natures. That's Nestorian. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Jesus has two natures. We can't separate them like the Nestorians did, but we can't mix them into one like you're doing. He has two natures, and they're united in one person. They have another council, and the two natures people win, and the one nature people get kicked out. Okay, now this is important, because this is... The first one was the Nestorian thing. Now you got the council of uh, Cal Calcedon, I think is how you say it. And um, this is where one of the earliest splits happened with the Oriental Orthodox Church, okay, bouncing. But some people still side with the One Nature people because they thought the Council of Chalcedon was stupid. So this is Armenian, Coptic, Ethiopian, Syriac, okay? So this is where they diverged off, and it's literally of, is, is it uh, two natures or one united nature? It's such a small, minor uh, detail and they, I believe they've since worked on re like um, reconciliation between the Orthodox and the Oriental Orthodox over um, this specific thing because it's such a small deviation. Is Jesus of two natures or from two natures or with two? Right, it, you get really, really into the minutia of like minor things if that makes sense. Okay, you can make a denomination out of this. Okay, so Jesus has two natures, human and divine. We can't mix them or separate them. And Saint Augustine just clarified that we need to depend on God. Now we've got Christianity all figured out. Good news, it's now cool to be a Christian. 
Bad news. A lot of people are only being Christian because it's cool. <laughs> ah, sounds like America, huh? Bro, that's so lame. I'm so sick of all these phonies. Say the hardcore Christians going off to live in monasteries to show how Christian they are. There, they pray for hours, deny themselves, and sing Gregorian chants, which are a cool new style of music invented by Gregory. That's still around today, isn't there? You got folks that like, yo, I want to go and build a business as a Christian. I want to go build a YouTube channel as a Christian. And be like, no, it's a power. You got to be poor for Jesus, right? It's the same, same things keep happening. History always repeats itself, right? Um, you still have the same thing. Folks that don't care about life on this side of eternity, they just want to be poor and, you know, do serve the Lord in the way, the only way they see fit. The Muslim armies spread rapidly and take over a lot of formerly Christian lands. And if you're someone who's not Muslim living in a Muslim land, you need to pay to not be Muslim. And there's yep. a lot of persecution of Christians. So in these times, it's very important for the Christians to stick together and defend against the Muslim empires. So it's important that Christianity stays united, despite cultural differences. Yo, remember the Nicene Creed, the document that says what Christianity is? The Pope wants to add something to it to clarify that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. Uh -oh. Dude, you can't change the creed, says the Patriarch of Constantinople. Yes, I can. No, you can't. You're kicked out. No, you're kicked out. So Christianity splits. You can make denominations out of this. <laughs> now, this is the big schism, the great schism. 1054. So remember, every, about every 500 years has been a massive schism. The first one was the Oriental, the Armenian, the Coptic, Ethiopian. Those folks split. And then you have this big schism, schism between the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholic. Both identify as Catholic. The Eastern Orthodox will say they're the true Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic will say they're the true Catholic Church. Catholic just means universal. And so that split happens at 1054. Bro, the Muslims keep invading. We should defend our land and maybe even retake the Holy Land. It's time for a crusade. They recruited soldiers from everywhere and got the war really hyped up. It's going to be the most epic holy war ever and everyone thinks Jesus is about to come back. Maybe the war can reunify East and West. Just kidding, they turn on each other and they don't retake the Holy Land. But they do retake Spain and Portugal. That's actually really impressive. They reconquered Spain. They retook the Spain Line Church. Very inspiring. Anyway, the Crusades end up being kind of anticlimactic. They weren't that violent and they definitely weren't nearly as bad as your high school history textbook probably said they were. <laughs> Shot, shots at the public schools. Despite the fact that they didn't do much, there's still a lot going on because St. Anselm just figured out that God exists. He exists because of the way he is. And just in time for the period of medieval scholasticism, Thomas also comes along later and finds other reasons why God exists. He Shout out to St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, if you're not into re reading any of this stuff on St. Thomas Aquinas, natural law, um, this dude is brilliant. And I really like St. Thomas Aquinas, okay? Um, so uh, let's, let's, let's- Figure out that God exists. He exists because of the way he is. And just in time for the period of medieval scholasticism, Thomas also comes along later and finds other reasons why God exists. He also has a thing where he takes non-Christian philosophy and makes it Christian, because all truth is God's truth. Interesting, right? He takes non-Christian philosophy makes it Christian. We actually see Paul doing this in Acts 17 at Mars Hill. We see this all throughout the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul using secular philosophers to drive home the points he's trying to make to the, to the church in Corinth, right? And so this is... Um, it's interesting that St. Thomas Aquinas was doing this with Aristotle and with all these things because his approach was that all truth is God's truth. This is, I don't want to go down this, this, this rabbit hole, but this is a Christians really struggle with this idea of like genetic fallacy or origin fallacy, the origin myth, like just because something is, isn't Christian in origin or is pagan in origin, therefore you have to completely discard it. Right. And so people take really radical extremes on this stuff. Right. So anything that has any questionable origin is absolutely bad. Whereas St. Thomas Aquinas would say, no, you could have, a questionable origin yet because god is behind all truth you can receive and or redeem certain things right don't let those things become idols don't let aristotle be an idol to you but you could still pull things out of some uh, uh pagan things that are not um godly in origin but there's still some value in it and reject the parts that are anti-christian okay? he's got a whole system for figuring out everything and the catholic church gets on board the Orthodox Church has an alternative. The Orthodox Church had the, the had the iller had the iller people and the I icons. Now like, everything. That's like, uh, come on, like the image on the right looks way more hard than the image on the left. I, I get, maybe just because I just grew up with this sort of imagery, but I definitely feel like the Orthodox is definitely catching W's in terms of their iconography and their design and just their aesthetic is way harder to. Even the cross looks harder. The cross with the little the little thing the little thing for the feet. You know what I mean? Like. Come on, bro. Come on. Just aesthetic aesthetic is just on 10. Church has an alternative. And he's not the only one doing this. Everyone's trying to figure out everything. And since we're figuring out everything about God, we should learn about the world as well, because the world's God's creation. So they learn about astronomy, the sciences, math, and music, and lay the groundwork for modern science, because mm -hmm. theology is the queen of the sciences. And they start the modern universe. Yeah! Theology is the queen of the sciences.
That's a quotable right there. And we also forget that some of the biggest institutions around, as he's about to explain, have their start in Christian origin. And they start the modern university system and hospital system. That's now right. it looks like we finally got Christianity all figured out. Bro, the church is getting kind of corrupt. Yeah, shut up. It's time for the Black Plague. Everyone's dying and no one knows why, so everyone thinks Jesus is about to come back. <laughs> but after the plague dies down, the church has time to party, so they make a lot of really cool art and stuff. It's the Renaissance. But who's paying for all this? Easy. The people give money to the Pope, and the Pope gives them less time in purgatory. Yikes. Did not know that the Renaissance was funded by indulgences. It's interesting. Yeah, this is really corrupt. It's time for some brave man to speak out against this. Martin Luther? No, it's Huss. He's going to reform the church. You can make a nomination out of this. Except it fails and he gets executed. <laughs> That's too bad. Maybe try again in a hundred years. Martin Luther has something to say. 95 things, actually, so he nails them to the door of the church. Maybe he convicts the church. Except no, he gets kicked out. The churches keep siding with him and doing the reformation anyway. So he begins reforming the church's teachings, saying that salvation's by faith alone, purgatory's not real, and the Bible is our ultimate authority. Everything gets really heated and everyone thinks Jesus is about to come back. Shout out to Martin Luther, man. Shout out to Martin Luther. So the Reformation spreads throughout Germany. I wonder if it's happening anywhere else. It is actually in Switzerland. What if we could unite the two Reformations and reform the entire church? So Luther... By the way, uh, Swiss, the Switzerland Reformation, this is just a sidebar. The Switzerland Reformation also has an interesting overlap with our modern free market system. That some of the ideas from Swiss, Swiss Switzerland out of that Reformation sprouted up our our some of our views of of capitalism and free market societies as we know them now. It's an interesting uh, whole separate conversation. Meets with Zwingli, the head of the Swiss Reformation, to see if they agree on the issues. Bro, what do you think about the Lord's Supper? So the bread isn't really the body of Christ. What do you mean? He says, this is my body. Well, is means represents. No, is means is. Is means is. Calm down, Luther. Get out, Zwingli. So that failed, and now there's two reformations. You can make the nominations out of this. And the <laughs> Yo! All the additional denominations out of this is hilarious. There's also some radicals who don't want to be part of either because they want to change everything, and that means not baptizing babies. You can make a nomination out of this. Man, all these reformations going on, says King Henry VIII. Don't worry, Pope, I will never leave you. Bro, you can't divorce your wife, says the Pope. So Henry cancels the Pope and makes himself the head of the Church of England. <laughs> and there we have the Anglican denominations out of this, which is at what, you know, the royal family in Britain till this day, I believe, traced themselves back to uh, this, right? That's why the, the queen was the head of the Anglican church. It goes back to this. You can make a nomination out of this. Looks like Zwingli just died, so John Calvin is predestined to take over the Reformation in Switzerland. And he's predestined to write a big book about a bunch of stuff, including the fact that God's in control of everything, especially whether or not you'll be saved. And he wants to unify with the Lutherans, so he modifies the Reformed view of the Lord's Supper. He says we really do receive the body and blood of Christ, just spiritually. He's That's interesting, right? That Martin Luther came out of Switzerland and that he adjusted this entire, uh, how you take the, the, the Lord's Supper. He says we really do receive the body and blood of Christ, just spiritually. He sends them his view, but they're predestined to leave him unread. John Knox takes Calvin's reformed <laughs> ideas to Scotland and makes it so that the church is run by elders. You can make a nomination out of this. Yep. The Church of England still isn't sure whether it's reformed or Catholic. I guess it's somewhere in the middle. Bro, that's not good enough, say the Puritans, trying to purify the Church of England of everything Catholic. You can make a nomination out of this. Some of them give up on trying to purify the church and just run away to America. It takes a bit of time for the dust to settle, but once it does, it's time for Protestant scholasticism. Let's write down everything we believe and put our beliefs into neat theological systems. And by the way, this idea of systematic theology is very much so a Protestant thing, right? That you have this like nice little little boxes for everything and little views and everything kind of connects and overlaps. This You won't find this in Eastern churches. It's not as linear. It's like men are like waffles and women are spaghetti, right? I think somebody put out a book called this, right? So the, the, the biggest difference that you'll find between Western and Eastern views is that it's, it's kind of like that, meaning that in, in, in Western theology or in systematic theology, you have, which, you have these like boxes. It's like a waffle. Everything is separate. You could put boxes, you could put different fruit in the boxes. You could put syrup in one box and not the other one. And it's very separate. Whereas in the Eastern view, it's 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 more by the Eastern, I mean Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Armenian Orthodox, how I grew up. It, it flows more like spaghetti. Everything is touching and overlapping everything, right? So it's less compartmentalized like a like a systemic the, uh, systematic theology book, um, and, and more kind of like flowing together. 
The Dutch Calvinists are writing everything they believe, including the whole predestination thing. Arminius is one of them, but he doesn't like that part. So in response, the Dutch Reformed clarify what the Calvinist position is. But aside from that, this inspires people to start a bunch of universities to study all sorts of things, and people's religious beliefs inspire them to make advancements. That inspires people this to start led a to Harvard, Yale, and all these churches being, I mean, all these colleges being launched. Universities to study all sorts of things, and people's religious beliefs inspire them to make advancements in math, music, law, and philosophy. And now it looks like we've got Christianity all figured out. <laughs> Bro, this is all going way too far. We need less of this nerdy theology and more personal piety. Say uh -huh. the pietists who think the Lutheran churches are getting way too nerdy. And they invent the concept of a Bible study because everything needs to be more personal. Something similar is happening in the American colonies, where a bunch of preachers go around and preach personal religious experience over religious ritual. Is this mm. a good thing? Church is split over this. One of these awakening guys is John Wesley, who wants to awaken the Anglican church, which he thinks has gotten spiritually cold. Hmm. He starts a movement which ends up making a denomination out of this. So all this questioning... And John Wesleyan, by the way, is, is, is dope. Uh, Wesleyanism, the Wesleyan quadrilateral approach to reason, scripture, experience, and church history is actually, I think, a very useful framework in terms of how to approach these issues. Religious authority is leading people to question everything, which leads to the Enlightenment. America questions whether they need a king. France goes even further and questions whether they need God. I bet they're going to be the most enlightened people ever. Oh, wait, no, they just killed everyone. Let's not do that. But anyway, the Enlightenment makes everything more secular, and some people adopt a more deistic view of God, which causes mm -hmm. other people to think we need another great awakening. People are starting to distrust traditional religion. So now we've got revivals, social movements, and societies galore. There's also the restorationist movement where people try to rebuild Christianity from scratch. You Aha. can make a bunch of denominations out of this. So Aha! The restorationists restore Christianity from scratch. And who falls inside of this arm? Well, it's disputable that the Nazarene church falls in there. The Church of Christ, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, meaning that they don't come out of any specific tradition. They don't come from Baptist. They don't come from Reform, right? They, they, they just, they're not Lutheran. This is now a restoration is because they want to bring Christianity back to what it once was, right? And so some of these we would, we would call cults, right? And some of these we would say, oh, they're, they're, you know, they're probably coloring within the lines of Orthodox belief, you know? of which are actually heretical. And do I even need to say it? But that's all going on in America. How's Europe doing? Prussia just said the Lutheran and Reformed churches in their country have to unite, and they end up just being reformed. So some of the Lutherans run away to America. I wonder how the Catholics are doing. I haven't checked in on them in a while. They just had a council where they said the Pope can make infallible statements. Now this is wild. And this, I didn't get into this with Trent Horn, unfortunately. The fact that they didn't make this firm statement of the Pope having the ability to make infallible statements until 1868 because they're all about apostolic succession apostolic succession apostolic succession it's like bruh you really believe that 18 like the, the papacy wasn't really a thing till 1868 right this vatican it's the first vatican it's vatican one you know might want to tread lightly <laughs> with some of this stuff things are pretty crazy for the protestants too they're being influenced by the Enlightenment, which leads to theological liberalism, mm -hmm. which is basically where Christians stop believing in Christianity. You see, yep. now we're... And that's what we just covered on a previous video, right? Enlightened. We know miracles can't happen because there's no examples of them happening because all supposed examples of miracles have a natural explanation because everything has a natural explanation because miracles can't happen. And it just becomes an ongoing loop. Makes perfect sense. So there's no virgin birth, no divine revelation, Jesus didn't do any miracles, and there's no resurrection. Bro, you're denying the fundamentals of Christ. Yeah, yeah, there were definitely, obviously there were popes behind, before that, uh, just to back up real quick, there were popes before that. The issue is that the idea that the pope is infallible and that there weren't equal views of popes besides just the ones that they believe came down from Peter. So meaning that if you look at all the Orthodox churches, right, you look at the Armenian church, that's, that's Bartholomew. That was the bishop that planted that church. If you look at other churches, there were other leaders, churches in India, churches, right? So on, like Thomas went to India, right? Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark and was close with Peter, went to Egypt, right? So all of these apostles went everywhere. So the idea of like apostolic succession only being relevant in the Catholic Church is wild because there was a mo there's multiple arms of the church that claim apostolic succession. And to say that the Pope is superior in any way, shape, or form to any of the other 
I guess, popes or bishops or whatever you would call them that have the same degree of apostolic succession over those churches is, 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 is nuts because they all claim apostolic succession. Christianity, say the f sense. So there's no virgin birth, no divine revelation, Jesus didn't do any miracles, and there's no resurrection. Bro, you're denying the fundamentals of Christianity, say That's the right. fundamentalists yelling at the modernists who are beginning yep. to take over the mainstream churches. Yep. But the progressive Christianity now. instinct of the fundamentalists isn't really to reform the churches. It's more like they want to run away because they're still coming out of the Great Awakening. And they're beginning to distrust everything mainstream, like mainstream mm -hmm. schools, mainstream yep. universities, mainstream science, and they want to retreat from the cities because they think Jesus is going to come back anyway. This sound familiar? Does this sound familiar, you guys? And they're beginning to listen to who preaches this kind of stuff, and you can kind of categorize where they are, right? Listen to the and you see we see this stuff. We see people running away from the marketplace, from culture, right? You see people running away from these things right now, right? Who are they? They're the fundamentalists. They're here. Trust everything mainstream, like mainstream schools, mainstream universities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mainstream science, and they want to retreat from the cities because they think Jesus is going to come back anyway. Mm -hmm. So they should just retreat to the rural areas until that happens. And with mm -hmm. the fundamentalists gone, it just makes the mainline churches even more theologically liberal. Yo, a bunch of people just had some serious spiritual experiences on Azusa Street. You can make a denomination out of this. Also, <laughs> sick of theological liberalism? Karl Barth sure is because after World War I, he realized that human progress can't save us. But he's not a fundamentalist either, so he has a sort of middle ground. And he signs a statement with Dietrich Bonhoeffer saying they're not going to be fascist. And after World War II starts, yeah. After the war is over, the state of Israel forms, which causes a rise in dispensationalism, which is where people think Israel is going to make Jesus come back. Also, some fundamentalists want a more friendly diet version of fundamentalism, partly because they don't like racial segregation. Shout out to Billy Graham. Shout out to Billy Graham. This is where the neo-evangelical movement starts. This is technically what I would be. I would be a neo-evangelical, I guess, right? I would be a neo-evangelical um, in terms of like the type of non-denominational church that was, you know, would, would go to these Billy Graham crusades back in the day. Right? Of evangelicals, a lot of churches are now non-denominational. It's actually Baptist, but don't worry about it. And a lot of conservative <laughs> Christians are flocking to these non-denominational churches from the mainline churches, which yep. only causes the mainline churches to become more theologically liberal. I wonder yep. what the Catholics are up to. They just had another council. They clarified that the Pope is only infallible in very special cases. Ain't that interesting? They had to have another uh, council a hundred years later. Gosh, I really wanted to get into this stuff with Trent Horn, right? Because I'm 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 so fascinated by this. Like, Pope is infallible, and if you're not under the Catholic Church and not in proper fellowship, and it's like it's like so your your orthodoxy or your like closed standard essentials are modern. I I just tend to be I I'm just I'm just skeptical. And they said that Protestants are still technically Christian, so that means they can start to be more ecumenical. How and they said that Protestants are still technically Christian. So that means they can start to be more ecumenical. This is a very bad term, usually around fundamentalists. Ecumenical. What does that mean? That means that you think that it's not just your little your little team that, is, that, that are the only ones saved, right? That means that you believe that people who place their faith in Jesus and believe in the essentials of the faith, which is like the Trinity, the resurrection, the virgin birth, right? The authority of scripture that they are they 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 could be saved as well right and so this word gets a bad rap ecumenical right and so like someone like myself i don't discard all uh catholics as not being saved or all presbyterians or all methodists or all orthodox as not being saved and so i would get the 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 accusation that you're ecumenical and therefore that's bad i don't see an issue with ecumenical as long as we're solid on what the essentials of the christian faith are that Jesus was Jesus God, that Jesus rise from the grave, was he virgin, was he born of a virgin, right? If we agree on all those essentials and uh, scripture being the authority in terms of how we look at the world, we're then, we're then debating minutia and definitions and minor details that matter, by the way, that really matter. These things matter. But uh, this, this kind of gets a, a, a really bad rap um, from a lot of people. How's the Eastern Orthodox Church persecuted? How's the Oriental? The Eastern Orthodox Church was under communism, right, in, in Soviet Russia, which is where I come Orthodox from. Orthodox Church. Persecuted. And this, persecuted by the Muslims, I was I grew up Oriental Orthodox uh, under the Armenian arm, and we literally came out because Azerbaijanian was a, Azerbaijan was a Muslim state, and we were persecuted by RZ Muslims to flee because of the programs of Baku. This goes back to the 1915 genocide. They were crucifying Christians. 
um, at the time. Like, there's some really dark stuff that was happening by the Turks against the Armenians. And that's just, that's just my lineage. That's like what I know. I don't even know what's going on with other people, you know? Hey, can pastors be women? Yes, said the liberals. No, said the conservatives. And the liberals win, so the conservatives get kicked out. Actually, no, they don't really get kicked out. But they run away anyway, and they make their own evangelical denominations, which only causes the mainline church to get more theologically liberal. These evangelical denominations have a new style of worship music, and their numbers are rising, even though Christianity in the West overall is collapsing. It's exploding in Africa and Asia, though. Hey, can marriage be gay? Yes, said the liberals. No, said the conservatives. And the liberals win, so the conservatives run away again. And at this point, the mainline churches are so theologically liberal that most mm -hmm. of the churches within them don't even really believe in Christianity at all. Yep. So if you're in America and you go to the old historic church in the center of any given town, like First Presbyterian Church or First Methodist Church or First Anything Church, chances are it's a mainline church that's so theologically liberal it doesn't even have any real Christian believers in it. There's evangelical churches that have a lot of passionate believers, but they're kind of on the outskirts of society. So Western Christendom is basically dead, unless we retake the mainline church. Interesting conclusion he makes, like, unless we retake the mainline church. I don't know if anyone's really running to take the, the mainline church when you see other churches exploding in other parts of the world. So that was the only part where I'm like, eh, I don't know if I agree with that conclusion that he made. Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month where you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store only five dollars a month and ultimately it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of jesus using media podcasting and of course youtube the link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment i'll see you over there all right peace